The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I say, your your feud with Finley will go down in history. I think between your first and your last match with Fit Finley in Germany, I think it was 24 years um, and over 100 matches. And like I say, steel cage matches, chain matches, yeah. street fights, yeah. everything. But yeah. uh, I also want to talk yeah. about another one of your, um, one of your favourite rivals from Germany, and that's Robbie Brookside. Now, uh, oh, yeah. a lot of people know him uh, from the Liverpool lads and from doing work over in the United States. But you yeah. guys, you and Robbie had, you you tore the place down on many occasions uh, for CWA again in Germany. And uh, yeah. not quite as uh, as prolonged as your feud, uh, your rivalry with Finley. But Robbie Brookside was another one of your uh, your, your favourite rivals and, uh, and dance partners over in Germany, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Uh, Robbie was also uh, Fitz's tag partner as well at, at that time. Uh, Fitz originally tag partner was Danny Collins, but Danny uh, wasn't coming anymore to Germany, so Robbie took his role as Fitz's tag partner. And I, I knew Robbie from England, from Brian Dixon, uh, I, I took Robbie under my wing, and when he came to to Rill to to record for uh, Welsh Television, he stayed with me the same as Steve Riedel did, and uh, I looked after those boys because I I knew them, I liked their attitude, both Riedel and Brookside, and uh, I looked after them. So, yeah, but like like you said, he played a big role as well. Yeah, with matches against me. Yeah, yeah. Any particular favourite moments or matches? Uh, being in the ring with with Robbie Brookside, because especially being you know two Englishmen. Um, over in Germany, uh, you wanted to put on a hell of a display uh, for the fans over there. And uh, you you guys, I'd say, you tore it up every single night to packed houses um, across Germany. Tell, tell us about some of your memories of going against Robbie um, in CWA. Uh, I, I can't think of any highlights in the ring because it was it, it was all good. What we did yeah. in the ring with Finley, with and, out, and also Doc Dean when he came over, I had championship matches with him as well. By that time, I was uh, British Empire Meister, British Empire Champion in Germany, which invented by uh, the promoter in Hanover. They needed a title for me, so I wasn't. Anymore, the British heavyweight champion, so they invented the other one, yeah, British Empire champion. So I, I did matches against Robbie, I did matches against uh, Dean, uh, Doc Dean, also. They were, they were a fabulous tag team. The one thing I remember with, with Robbie when I was just near it. During the end of my career, we were wrestling in Brighton, I think, with Robbie and Doc Dean on. I think I was on with Robbie last match of the program, and we wanted to go for a drink afterwards. I, I must have been over 40, 45 at that time. We wanted to go for a drink. We were too late. It's not like Germany, but bars open all night. Too late. So what are we going to do? Robbie said, there's a university bar in that building next door. He said, we'll go in there. I said, how are they going to let me in there? So he said, 
come with us. So I went with Robbie and the Doc Dean to this university bar. Dorman stopped me and he said, uh, I'm sorry, you're not a student. Before I could open my mouth, mouth Robbie said, Hey, mister, he says, we're on pro, me and Doc are on probation and he's in charge of looking after us. So <laughs> I said, okay, go in. So they got me, they got me in for a drink as, as a uh, welfare worker. Brilliant. Yeah. Happy Absolutely man, brilliant. <laughs> Indeed. Um Moving Germany to one side, and I know in 1991, um, you took part in several dark matches on a WWF tour of the UK, didn't you? So um, I yes. think there was, it was a few matches, mostly, I think, uh, six-man tag matches. You would be teaming with yeah. Danny Boy Collins and Dave Taylor against yeah. uh, typically uh, a Chick Cullen, Drew, Don uh, Drew McDonald, Johnny Smith, or Skull yeah. Murphy. Uh, that you, I think you had about four or five matches, including the dark match on their um, on their uh, pay per view show as well. They're the kind of big show. Yeah, who, so, who, I don't, who was I against on that pay per view? So uh, Can you um, I think I think it was um, Drew McDonald, Chick Cullen, and Skull Murphy um, in the dark match. But um, what what are your memories of that WWF tour um, and? Uh, it must have been quite strange having the big American company coming over, packing out the arenas, um, and you guys that were well versed to wrestling in front of the UK audiences were kind of there as the support act. But what are your memories of of that uh, WWF tour and uh, those matches that you performed on? Uh, the main memories I have was I I wasn't on all of them because. Uh, I was going to Japan that, at that time. Uh, so I, I just did one or two matches. The main reason, mostly, was to see Andre the Giant, yeah. who, had, when he first came to England, lived with me and my family. And we travelled together numerous times uh, in Japan. They, they used to put me on the same tours as Andre to keep him happy because he knew he had a drinking partner and an eating eating part, partner. So uh, that was one reason. Hogan, I knew, I met in Japan, uh, who was in not in love, but who was full of, of rollerball Rocco. His best right. friend, yeah, and and Hogan spoke the world of Mark, as everybody did. Mark Mark was one of the one of his the best that ever came in my era. Mark Marty, myself, were all living near Manchester, all British champions, and. Uh, the world was going well for us. So uh, I was free the night. I wanted, Andre wasn't on that tour. So, but I was free and I was flying to Japan the next morning. So I used them to pay my fare to London from, I was living in Wales, paid my fare, put me in a hotel, and I did a job for them. Yeah. Good chance to talk to Hogan again because I've, I've been on a tour of Japan with him. And like I say, he was always an exceptionally nice person in my mind. Whatever anybody else says, I don't know. But to me, he, re he remembers his friends when he got famous and looked after them all. And uh, he always, always, how's the rollerball going? How's the rollerball? He, he never forget, he never forgot his friends. 
so like I say, I, I use it to, uh, to, to pay my travel to London hotel. And then to top it all, I went in the, the after show party to say good night to everybody and Hogan as well. So I said, good night. And he said, here, take this with you. Nobody's going to drink that. And he gave me a bottle of whiskey that was a, a litre bottle, a, wow. a gallon bottle of whiskey. And I, I said, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to Japan next tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, take it with you, drink it in the hotel. So I, I, I struggled to carry this bottle, plus my wrestling bags, to the hotel. And uh, I drank one, one small glass of whiskey, said cheers to Hogan and left the bottle for the cleaners up in the morning. Absolutely. Fantastic story. Yeah. Really good story. And um, we alluded to it earlier, but I, I've got to speak to you about Japan now because alongside, obviously, the UK and Germany, Japan is very, very close to your heart. And uh, you yes. made so many close friendships out there. You mentioned Andre. Yes. You, you teamed with Andre many, many times over in New Japan. Um, and yes. uh, you, I think from 79 through to 2002, so that, that's 23 years you kind of wrestled regularly over in Japan. You mentioned 20-plus yes. tours over there. Um, yes. But it, you, you spent a long time over there. I think one of the tours was, um, I think, did you spend two or three years over there um, consecutively? So it's obviously a place very close to your heart, but somewhere where you got a great opportunity to earn some money and to wrestle the best wrestlers in the world, essentially. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like I say, Andre was a big part of it because he asked the the promoter, New Japan, to book me on the tours he was on because he liked my company and he wanted to repay, repay me for what happened in England. Uh, I, and I was always loyal to Japan. I got offers from other companies. Uh, Carl Gotch, who obviously you've heard the name Carl Gotch. He was a, a yeah. god in Japan. And he left New Japan and formed his own company at the time I was in Japan. And uh, Seiji Sagaguchi, who was Booker in Japan at that time calls me into the office the day that Carl Gotch left and asked me if I'd heard that Carl Gotch has formed a new company. I said, yes, I've heard. He said, we don't want you to go and speak with him. I said, you're too late. You're staying in the hotel just off opposite the Keogh Plaza. <laughs> And I went to see him this morning out of respect because he was the one that put me in, first of all. So I said, so Sagaguchi said, did you talk about going to work for his company, which was a shoot company kicking a martial arts company? I said, yes, he talked to me, but it's not the kind of company that I would work for, not my style. So he said, right, if you decide to stay with us, we'll give you 30% rise in your salary and uh, as many tours as you want. Oh, I said, oh, well, if you, if you want me that much, okay. <laughs> so that, unfortunately, that was the end of my relationship with Carl Gotch because he took the the hump when I said no, but it, it wasn't it wasn't my style. Yes, uh, semi semi shoot wrestling. No, yeah. not for me. No, and, and some of your legendary opponents over in New Japan. And uh, I know you had many matches against Antonio Inoki, Riki Choshu, uh, Kobayashi, uh, Fujinami, yeah. um, Fujiwara. Um, and, and, you know, 
from those legendary Japanese names, um, who who were some of your your favourite opponents? And uh, Masahiro Chono, can't forget about him, um, who was another legendary opponent of yours. Um, but who were some of your favourite Japanese opponents from your days in New Japan? Yeah, the, the favourites, like you said, uh, Chono. I I used to be look on the lookout for new talent to go to Otto Vance's tours. So I was, in fact, acting as booker for him. Mm. So Chono was the first one that I booked. Uh, and then came Funaki, uh, uh, N N Nagomi. The one that really got Chono was a big part. Yeah, but one that one that really I I treat him like a brother was Osamu Nishimura. We're in contact every week, and uh, I I just love it, love the, the fellow to to death. He's a, such a great man. He's still he's younger than me by twenty maybe 25 years but so i i took him to to otto otto vance i took him everywhere with me and in in germany i i looked after him and he repaid it looking after me in japan yeah yeah that that's and... that's what i that's what i love about the japanese people if they if they get to be your friends they're loyal and uh, loyalty to me is also a big part of my life and telling absolutely. the truth yeah absolutely and you mentioned earlier tony about uh, mark rollerball rocco and uh how big a fan hulk hogan was of of uh, rollerball but um you you faced him in Japan on a number of occasions uh, when he was under the mask as uh, Black Tiger, the original Black yeah. Tiger. Um, now, yeah. I'm sure that you, you wrestled him many times over here in the UK, um, but uh, to have the, the pleasure of wrestling him in, him in New Japan when he was under the mask, uh, that must have been a fun experience as well. Yeah, it was. It was, you know. I kept saying to him, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> On that tour, he wrestled as Tiger Mask, and he wrestled as as uh, Mark Rocco as well. He did. Right. He had two positions on on the tour. The, the funny I got to tell you with Inoki, we went to Taiwan after the tour in Japan. We went to Taiwan for a week, and the first night I was in a tag match with Inoki. Finish as usual was spinning kick to the chest and cover. This night, Inoki misjudged the kick and hit me right in the mouth. Well, my denture was smashed to a thousand pieces. Wow. Really? So I go back to the dressing room, and Inoki is cow towing do you know what cow towing is when they get Please on all me. fours oh okay yeah when they get on all fours and go into a prayer like position i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry inoki the biggest star in japan wrestled mohammed ali is doing that to me when i get to the dressing room with my handful of teeth I said, get up, you silly old bugger. Don't embarrass me. But he didn't understand that. But he, he was deeply re regretful. And he said to me, when you get home, go to your dentist, get everything done, best quality. Next time you're in Japan, bring me the bill. I will pay it. Which I did. Next tour, gave him the bill. He paid it. And then a couple of days later, I'm after the show, walking, looking for a restaurant and see Inoki and 
Fujinami and a few others in a sushi bar. Dick Mur Murdoch was with me, so I, they saw us walking past. Inoki sent a young boy to bring us in. Inoki sat, made a place next to him for me to sit in. Thank you. Buying, bowing as, as usual. And uh, just then the, the waiter came and said in J Japanese, which I didn't understand, ah, the Engl English person is joining you. That shows what a fits, fits wrestling is in Japan. Inoki blew his top, stood up, and smashed a soya bottle on the table and gave the, the waiter a rollicking. He didn't realize that when the, the, the bottle smashed, I had a white silk shirt on and oh. I was covered head to foot in <laughs> soya sauce. <laughs> and and he, just, he just looked at me as if to say, oh, no, not me not again. again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a fantastic but story. The, the next morning, a young boy was sent to my hotel. I said, leave it. I'll, I'll lawn, go to the laundry and do it myself. Eight o'clock the next morning, young Japanese boy knocked on the door. Inoki-san, shirt, please. And he actually took it himself to a laundrette and washed it and ironed it and gave it back to me. Brilliant. That That is re respect. Absolutely. And you, you was lucky that that yeah. soy sauce came out of your, your white uh, silk top there, Tony, but uh, good, good to <laughs> yeah. see that they looked after you. Good to see they looked after you. And the final individual yeah. I want to talk to you about um, is Owen Hart, because you had the pleasure yes. of wrestling Owen Hart um, both in Japan and in Germany, didn't you, um, on a few yes, occasions in both countries. What, what was your yes. kind of experience with, with Owen Hart? Because I think a lot of people would say that he is arguably one of the, the best, one of the smoothest, uh, one of the most intelligent um, and uh, just naturally gifted wrestlers ever to step through the ropes. Um, and um, I'd say sadly, sadly missed, of course, but you had the opportunity to face and to work with Owen both in Germany and in Japan. And uh, you had yes. some, some great some great outings with Owen, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, he wasn't a, a going out man. Uh, he wasn't a drinker. He wasn't a smoker. He didn't do drugs. He just wanted to wrestle. Uh, I actually uh, got him into Germany as well because Chris Benoit, I booked on the same tour and Otto Vance said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take Chris Benoit. What about Owen Hart? I said, I don't know if he's available. I'll ask him. So, I was, okay, if you would. So I asked Owen, yeah, love to experience. Chris Benmar was also, at one point, a great colleague. I was best man on Usher at his wedding in Germany when he married a German girl. I looked after him like, like a, a brother how he got to to what he did and, and what he became, I can't understand. I can't understand. It must have been the, the drugs, I don't know. Yeah. But what what he did, you can't excuse in any form. But all I can say is when I met him, he was a, a wonderful man or boy, like I say. Yeah. I, I went to – I went to uh, – New, New Japan wrestling school to help train Chris Benoit. And uh, he was always thankful. Owen was a different class of pe a person totally. He was, uh, he, he was court courting, 
brought his girlfriend with him. He wasn't a big drinker. He'd, he'd have a, a bottle of beer. In, in Germany and Austria, the, if you fucked up in the ring or did something that wasn't satisfactory to your colleagues, you would find a case of beer. Wow. And Finley and I were on the board of control uh, issuing fines for the case of beer. And at one time in Hanover, I, I think we had 17 cases of beer <laughs> in the dressing room, unused. <laughs> so we, we were in charge of that. But Owen drank very, very little. And Chris out also. They, they weren't big drinkers like English and Europeans are. Yeah. We, we did a lot of beer drinking, especially after the shows. And uh, it, it was part in, in Germany and Austria. You were in the same place for weeks on end. And we all had our own trailers or camping uh, things, caravans. Yeah. So we all lived on a camping place. When we had days off, we used to barbecue together. At night, we used to go to wine festivals, and it was like a big happy family. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some good times, some good times. Um, yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. Please continue, please continue. No, like I say, it was like a big happy family. I, I remember England, what, what year was it, when they won the uh, European Cup against Germany? Uh, in in the seventies, uh, in the eighties, or something like that. Yeah, well, I, I don't think that's ever happened in my lifetime. But um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> apart from the ladies, the lionesses did very well last week, but um, never, yeah. not not for the men. <laughs> Anyhow, we, we were all sat sat on the camping place. Mick McMichael, who was also a great friend, great referee, great wrestler. And uh, Mick McMartel and I and Finley and a couple of others all on the same camping place within 10, minute, 10 yards of each other. And we all got out at night watching television, drinking a case of beer till the early hours of the morning because you could lie in, get up yeah. 10, 11 o'clock, go training, go swimming have a wash, and then go to the wrestling. You couldn't yeah, wish yeah. for anything better. <laughs> Brilliant. And, and um, if I were to put you on the spot and say, who were some of your favourite opponents to get in there with over your legendary career? People that you really enjoyed getting in there with, having smooth matches, exciting matches, um, night in, night out. Who, who would be the, the top two or three in your, kind of, your list of favourite opponents Whoa. ever than Tony? Whoa. Oh, what's a question? Sorry to put you on the spot Obviously, there, my friend. <laughs> Obviously, the, the first one is John Quinn, followed followed by Pitt Finley. And then I could list 10 others for the third place. I really don't yeah. want to do that. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely. It, it, uh, please continue. It's a long list of people like Marty Jones, yeah, Pat Roach, who always a good friend and a good opponent. There's so many. I don't want to name a third. The first two were undeniable, one and two, but the rest. There's yeah. 20 at least. Good answer. Good answer. And let me ask you a, a similar question then. Who, who would be probably the best wrestler you've ever been in the ring with? And you're renowned for being one of the, one of the all-time greatest. And I spoke to Marty, and he's renowned for being one of the best technical wrestlers of all time. But who would you say is probably the best wrestler you've ever been in the ring with? 
as as professional or amateur? Uh, let's say professional within your professional career. I would say Fit Finley. I, the first time I the first time I saw Fit Finley was uh, I was working for Brian. Just started working for Brian. Uh, I was on with John Quinn. I know Nico Solenkovic came to the show to look for new wrestlers. And Finley was on last. I don't know against who, but I, I watched him and I thought, I'd only just gone for, for Dixon and Ori. And the first time I'd, I'd met Finley and Paula. Uh, how have I missed this talent? How I, I didn't know him, you know. I'd, I'd heard of him, but not a much, not a lot. But you could see the the talent flowing out of him. Really was, and uh, yeah, yeah. He was he was definitely the best of the best. Yeah, and I don't think many people would argue uh, your your choice there. And like I say, you got to know the great man over many years and have many tremendous battles with him. Um, final question from me then, Tony. Um, what what are some of your your proudest moments within your professional wrestling career? You've you've been all over the world. You've wrestled the very best. You've accomplished many many titles and accomplishments over that uh, glorious career of yours. But have you got kind of maybe one or two really, really proud moments that will live with you forever? Uh, Royal Albert Hall on the Royal Show with uh, Duke of York. That was a, an honour. Tell us about that. Uh, it was... Uh, I, I can't remember who I was on with now. Uh, I, I, I was just become the British heavyweight champion. I might have been on with Colin Joyson, who was also a, a great friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, that I remember as one of the, the good parts of my life. And uh, like I say, Finley was supreme. I, I still in contact with him every week. That's great. Um, yeah, yeah. Tony Sinclair, it's been an absolute honour speaking to you for the last uh, hour and a half. Um, and um, I hope anybody that's watched this or listened to this has, has enjoyed um, this Legends Masterclass with uh, Tony Sinclair. But uh, Tony, if you've got any final words for your fans, for your friends, for your supporters out there? Um, and uh, anybody that might not have kind of come across your career until listening to this, um, have you got any words for those that uh, have watched this um, and maybe have enjoyed your career over the last 40 or 50 years? Uh, I would like to say to anybody that remembers me, I hope that you always enjoyed the performances that I was involved in. To anybody that didn't see me, shame, but it happens in life. There's lots of footage um, out there. There is lots of footage out there, Tony. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, it's old school, which I'm very, very into. And uh, like I say, I don't watch American uh I'll tell I'll tell you another time the, the story yeah. with Andre, my and Vince McMahon. Or yeah, do you want yeah, me to tell it now? Include it now, yeah, absolutely. We're all ears. We're all uh, enthralled okay. by your stories. And Andre was insisted that, that he wanted me to go to work for WWE in America, and Andre's idea was that I would I wrestled Anne Ray a couple of times in Scotland uh, in Edinburgh 
for Max Trabtree, and I was part of the Scottish team in kilts. So Andre got the idea to me to go to America and be a long lost cousin from Roddy Piper and form a team with Roddy Piper. I said, Andre, I've told you, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm happy in the Japan, Europe. What do I want to go to the States? I understand perfectly. If you go to the States, they're investing money in you. So they want you to stay there. And I don't want to stay in America. So don't even think about it. We're in Japan. It's middle of summer. It's sweat. The, the hall's full to the brim. And Vince McMahon Jr. is there. Andre and I go in the, the ring. Had a match with Sagaguchi and Hoshino. I spent most of the time in the ring. And Ray came in because he, he was starting to show pain in that time. And Ray, yeah. when he started to, to go down, he started to slow. His back was shattered. So I, I did most of the work. And as we, I'm sweating, you can't believe how much sweat was coming out of me. And as I walked in the dressing room door, Vince McMahon Jr. said to me, did you see Andre in that team match? And my answer was, I should effing think so. I was his tag partner <laughs> and walked up. So oh. that, was, that was the end of my career with, WWE, <laughs> which, I, I don't, which I don't regret one minute. Andrew was heartbroken, but I didn't give a damn. Well, was there any desire at all, either before or after that, to wrestle more stateside, Tony? Not necessarily with WWE, but did, did you wrestle much, if at all, over in America? I never, I never set foot in my life in America. Only one time at, uh, when I flew to Japan, you had to uh, go over, not America, Canada. Anyhow, I, I never went, never went to America. Uh, but it, the one time that I was interested, Terry Funk came to Bremen to wrestle with me and he came after the match he came back and he got me and Finley I think maybe Dave Taylor as well and he said it looks like I'm going to be the new booker for WCW so I said great what's that got to do with me so he said, I want you and Finley and the other one, I can't remember who it was, to come there and work for them. I said, that's the same situation that I've had with Andre. I'm not interested. I don't want to spend that much time away from my family and away from Europe. Yeah. And Terry looked at me and he said, if you'd seen the pile that stood a yard high of contracts in the office that I've just seen. They're all wrestlers that are employed by this firm where the wrestlers are injured but still getting paid every week. Yeah. He says it's a, a yard high, the pile. He said, so if I get the job as booker, you come over for six weeks when you got time or four weeks. He says, and when you want to go, just get injured and you'll, <laughs> you'll be on the, the pain list. That interested me. 
That I must say interests me. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> unfortunately, he didn't get the the, the job. Uh, I, I think uh, Bill Watts got it because he also contacted me because I, I was training his son Eric. Yeah. In Germany, he also contacted me to ask me if I would work on the show in England that they were looking in view to me going for them. And uh, I said, no, I was going to uh, Japan the next day. And he asked me if I could recommend somebody else. And I said, yes. Only one that, that I can recommend is Dave Taylor. And that was how Dave first got to WCW. Correct. Which he always, he always thanked me for. Yeah. Go. But uh, Tony Sinclair, please say, continue. <laughs> if you can't do it yourself, then recommend somebody good. <laughs> Absolutely. You certainly did that. But um, yeah. I want to thank you so much for your time today, Tony, and uh, really, Welcome. really appreciate um, your wonderful stories and your wonderful uh, like I say, retelling of the wonderful career that you've had over 40 years. Um, and uh, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Pleasure.